Hello and welcome to my video today. Recently I posted a how-to video showing the 12 volt battery replacement process with a new method to keep the battery powered. Here's a link in the upper right if you haven't seen it. I replaced the original AGM battery with a sodium ion battery and today I will show you how it has been working, vampire losses, differences with other batteries, and how I feel about it. So let's get started. I purposely waited a full two weeks since my battery installation to see how it performed in my ocean. I'll now bring up the BMS 6 battery monitor app and show you the history. I am using the BM6 app for the sodium ion battery. It's available in any of the app stores, so I'm going to click on that now. As you can see, the information on the screen, there's a gauge at the top that shows the state of charge of the 12 volt battery. It's at 72%. When it reaches, I don't know exactly at what point it gets to where it will start charging up. I Notice somewhere around 12 and a half or so, 12.4, it should be charging back up. And let's see, we also have the voltage down there, 12.44, and we have the temperature, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty much about ambient temperature. It's 64 in the garage, so 66 on the battery is pretty close. On the bottom of the screen, we have a voltage chart. It goes from nine to 16, and it basically shows the last several minutes of activity for the voltage. If you want to see previous history of the voltage, temperature, and state of charge, you can click on this little box here that has the arrows. And now I'm going to show you that. I am going to skip all the way back to the very first day, which is February 22nd in that I installed the battery that afternoon. And as you can see, it was around 14.48 volts during the day. And then when I put it in the car, it dropped down a bit and it just slowly dropped over time, roughly in that 13.4, 13.3 zone. If we go to the next day, you can see that it kept slowly discharging and then it got to about 12.8, 12 point, yeah, 12.88. Then I was running some tests that morning. I was, uh, I had the car unlocked. I was running the lights and the radio and a whole bunch of things. I was kind of stress testing the battery to see how it worked. And as you can see here, the car was charging it a little bit. The voltage did drop down to a low of, let's see what we got here, 12.21. Then it rapidly charged back up, as you can see on the chart here. Then I was doing some driving and there were some other testing that I was doing that afternoon. Then you could see it popped back up and also you can see those little spikes those occurred while i was driving and it keeps on going until about this point and then the car was parked and then the voltage was around 13.2 and just gradually fell down to about 13.4 at midnight I'm gonna pop over to the next day so we're on the third day now. And as you can see, the voltage is still in that 13 range, slowly dropping down. And I did a uh, drive around, I think that was uh, commute. And you can see some charging spikes there. The voltage stayed at that plateau. Then in the evening, I drove the car again back home. And as you can see, the voltage was around 12.9 or so, and then it slowly drifted down to midnight on that day. And as you can see right here, the voltage 
kept on going down to about 12.6 or so. Then sometime around four in the morning, the car charged it up from the high voltage battery pack. And then as you can see, it just slowly discharged over time. And as usual, there was some driving during the day, number of activity points here, but it stays mostly in that 13.2 range, 13.1, 13.2 during the day. And overnight, you can see it also, it did pretty well, it just slowly going lower on the voltage. And then you can see that there was a charge up and then there was a lot of driving going on here. So around 1900, I had the car parked and I was charging up with the EVSE plugged into the J1772 port and it was charging, I think up to 80% that night. So as you can see, the car was charging, the high voltage battery pack was charging the 12 volt battery over that time period which is normal. You'll see that when you're using the AGM battery too, the high voltage battery pack will charge the 12 volt when you're driving. Also when the car is on and ready and also when it's being charged using the charge port. So nothing unusual there. So the next day we see the voltage around 13 and just going down so this is pretty much the average chart that I see. It just kind of stays in this area here around the upper 13s. And it may get a little bit lower, but it seems to charge back up fairly quickly. Here you can see that next day following that, the voltage got down to about 12.64 again. So it kind of mirrors the previous days where it got down to about that voltage and then it charged back up to in the uh, high 13s and then it just discharges over time. So that's pretty much the summary of the voltage history. Nothing too surprising. It seems to be keeping consistently in that 13 range. The only times I saw it dropping down into the low 12s was when I was stress testing, but in normal everyday use, I haven't seen that. Another thing I want to show you is, let me go back to the first day. I'm gonna show you temperature. I was just curious about temperature. It stays in like, I guess the ambient temperature, maybe five, 10 degrees above ambient. So when it got installed, it was in the fifties in the garage. And as you can see here, that first day overnight, it dropped into the forties. My garage is usually about 45 degrees or so at night this time of year. And then throughout the next day, pretty much steady. It did start going up when it was charging. And you can see it got to about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. I haven't had a temperature monitor on a 12 volt battery before, so I'm not familiar with how hot a battery gets. But I'm assuming 84 degrees is not a big deal. And if we go to the next day, you'll see it hovers around 60s to 50s. Then when it's charging back up to 60s and so on. So that's mostly what I've seen is that uh, it's maybe about um, 5 to 10 degrees above ambient. Seems pretty normal to me. So... Let's go to the last item here. I'm gonna go back to the 22nd and look at the state of charge. State of charge stayed full that first day. The next day when I was uh, playing around with stress testing, you can see it went from 100 down into the 90s, into the 80s, and then it hit a low of 70%. So 70% is about the lowest I've seen for the state of charge on this 12 volt. And as you can see, it's charged back up to 100% in a couple hours. 
And as you can see overnight, it went up to 100 and it pretty much stayed up there until I was doing some driving. And then we had some decreases over that evening. You can see here, it was down to 83. And the night that it uh, did that big charge, it got down to 74%, and then it charged back up to 100%. And if you look at the chart, it only took it about a half hour to charge it back up. So not too surprising. We have 100% all across the day. Then we see this drop down here in the evening to 79%, and that persists. Throughout the next day, hovered around 80% or so. Then we shoot back up to 100%. I'm not sure if it makes much of a difference if the state of charge is hovering between 80 to 100%. I would only be concerned if it fell below 50%. That would probably indicate there's a problem. But as you can see here, it stays fairly high on the state of charge. We go another day here and as you can see on this following day it does go back down to about 73 so it seems to go down to about 73 75 percent or so say at a charge and then it charges back up and as you can see it keeps on going at 100 percent let's look one more day it pretty much stays at 100 the whole day and then we have some slight drops here in the evening and it appears to charge up again so nothing too surprising but i must say that there are some cases where the state of charge stays at 100 percent the whole day and some days where it stays at 80 percent not sure why it's doing that but i'll keep on looking at the battery monitor over time and see if i notice anything unusual i'll do some follow-up videos indicating if there's any issues with this battery but so far i'm pretty happy with the performance here's a final day here looking through charges back up to 100 percent and the day after that you can see it just hovers at 100 percent all day drops down a little bit in the 90s and then charges back up again so that's pretty much it for the battery monitor. If you press the back button, it goes back to the state of charge. All right, it is 6.58 p.m. and I have 233 miles left of range, 75% state of charge. Here's the center screen gonna leave it on trips here and let's check back in about 12 hours and see how much vampire losses occurred all right it is now 14 hours later i have the same 233 miles and 75 percent remaining so that's pretty good after 14 hours i can't complain here is the trip info page the Ocean's Low Voltage Battery Management System is designed for an AGM lead-acid battery. Alternative chemistries like lithium iron phosphate, or also known as LFP, doesn't work with the same charging characteristics and are also limited by temperature ranges. They're not very good in cold weather or in very hot weather. There are also issues with how the voltage drops dramatically when the state of charge goes down so it's not recommended to use LFP with the ocean. On the other hand, we have sodium ion, which is similar to LFP in that it's very lightweight. The battery typically weighs one third that of lead acid batteries. For example, 13 pounds for the sodium battery by Lithium Moto that I installed versus 34 pounds for the original AGM. On the good side, the charging for the sodium more closely matches that of the original AGM. And from my battery monitor checking, it seems to be running well for the past two weeks. Other benefits of the sodium are that you cannot overcharge or over discharge from the electrical system. 
energy density is similar to LFP and low battery weight is similar too. The internal resistance is slightly higher than LFP, so it's less demanding and more recognizable to the car's charging system. Sodium has a much more linear downward discharge curve so that the battery monitor can track the state of charge and state of health easier and more accurately. Sodium is also more earth friendly and more sustainable than the other chemistries. And since you'll be replacing the batteries less often, there is also less waste. Lastly, and very importantly, is that the sodium is very safe. It has a zero propensity for any exothermic reactions, no flame, no smoke, no internal swelling of cells, and no overheating issues. The lithium moto batteries are using the latest second generation sodium ion cells in the battery pack. Here's a view of my original 12 volt AGM battery when it was last being used. It had to charge up every half hour to hour or so and the voltage did sag down to 12.0 fairly often. It was nearing the end of its life and I did want to take a chance of getting stuck and this causing problems with the car if it did die on me. So even replacing the battery with a new AGM would greatly improve the voltage curve over time. However, I feel the sodium is doing an even better job than the AGM in this respect. I'll continue to monitor and let you know how it's working. So in conclusion, the performance has been very good. The battery has been around 13 volts and has only dipped down when I stressed the car several times when I had it unlocked purposely with the lights on and things running. And even then, the voltage doesn't get below 2.5 or so. Second, the battery does not drain over time as fast as with the original battery, so much so that the vampire losses to keep the battery charged are minimal. I expect this to prolong the life of the battery. In addition, the sodium chemistry is helping too. Although the Ocean's 12 volt BMS is not designed for sodium, it appears to be working well. That said, I have heard of at least one owner that had a problem with the battery not keeping a charge. I'm not sure if it was due to something with the car, like a faulty over the air software update affecting any of the ECUs or modules, but I do want to mention that just to be upfront. I also know several people that have been using these batteries with no issues at all. If you're interested in buying the sodium battery, I have a link to Lithium Moto, and if you use code RANGER, you will get free shipping or your choice of having a built-in battery monitor with Bluetooth with the purchase. The five-year prorated warranty gives me peace of mind, and I'm hoping this battery will have a good long life in my ocean. And considering how much of a pain it is to replace the battery, that's definitely a good thing. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.